have to send to false data is stored on West Register devices. The data which will be created in next three years will be more than the data which is created in the last 20 years. and embedded business for uh, Western Digital in India. So, I give two very amazing statements. First is, more than 40% of world's data is stored on Western Digital devices. I repeat, more than 40% of world's data is stored on Western Digital devices. And second, the data which will be created in next three years will be more than the data which is created in the last 20 years. So this is Mangal and in today's presentation on first half, I am going to discuss what are the key storage innovations which Western Digital has done which is going to help us out in capturing this Mangal data. And second part of the presentation is about what are the storage technologies which should be used so that the right system can be designed. If you choose a wrong storage product, wrong storage component, then it could create some reliability issues, it can degrade your storage solutions performance and even have a product recall. So let's jump into my presentation. So just a one page on uh, my uh, presentation, like this is a snapshot of this industry So we are a $80 million company and we build all kind of storage products right from selling network chips to micro SD cards and pen drives even client hard disk drives and solid state drives for laptops, desktops for uh, NDRs and DVRs and for uh, NAS kind of boxes and with the acquisition of HGST we also ventured into the data center hard disk drives and we also built large storage boxes so this is a $18 billion dollar portfolio. So about innovations in storage. If you see the first, first hard disk drive which we built in 1959, it was of 5 megabyte of capacity. It was the size of a washing machine. And it's now in 2022, the size is just a 3.5 inch. And the capacity is 20 terabytes. Over 4 million times of capacity have been increased in the last couple of decades. And when it comes to the solid state drives, the first storage uh, was built at 20 megabytes and now we have a uh, SSD which is 16 terabytes. So this Western Digital is always pioneer when it comes to launch the high capacity storage systems. So let's talk about innovations in uh, our storage products. So there are only two products where you can store the data. For us, data is zeros and ones. The so first is hard disk drive, and the second one is the flash storage. So hard disk drive is used primarily where you need very high capacities, but very low cost. And flash memory is used where you need high performance, low latency, and small form vector. Even now, the hard disk price is 10 times cheaper than the solid state drives. So we are going to talk about innovations in these two areas. The first one is the flash technology. So flash technology is primarily, it's a flash memory cell. It's a semiconductor wafer. And how do we increase more and more capacity? So in early part of the 2000s, our technology was on 160 nanometer. Now if we reduce, shrink the uh, size of the transistor, then only we can add more and more capacity and we will reduce the uh, prices. So by 2015, we shrunk the node to 15 nanometer and after that, we could not do that because of the technological limitations. So the 2D, two-dimensional X by 15 nanometer was the last. But our technologists and our engineers, they built a 3D NAND cell, which is what basically putting all the cells one over the other so that multiple layers of uh, uh, cells can be created. So, in a real estate analogy, you can say initially, when a piece of land is a one pound, and now we are building multi story buildings. So, that's how we are increasing the capacities. And if you see the first product that we launched, it was 48 layer, and then subsequently 64 layer, 96 layer. So, today, 2022, we have built 162 layer 
3D NAND will be set and we call it vertical scaling. So not only we are doing vertical scaling, we are also again squeezing the cell in the X, Y and the Y directions. We call it horizontal scaling. So we are trying to reduce the memory hold density. We are also doing a lot of overhead reductions and CMOS is placed under the cell. For example, let's say in a real estate tower, if the parking is open, then there is a huge space is wasted. wasted. So if you put parking in the basement, then there is a storage space. So exactly the same thing we are doing in the lateral scaling. So by doing vertical and lateral scaling, we are able to pack more and more number of bits into the one cell. And last but not the least, there is another way to scale. That is logical scaling. For example, in the 2D NAND cell, we used to have just one bit in one cell. Then we came MLC, we added two bits per cell and then three bits per cell. And right now in 2022, we have built QLC, which is four bits per cell. So adding is like earlier in real estate analogy, in a house there was only one person and now we have a four person. So what's happening because of that? We have built a 162, a 162 layer uh, for a QLC cell. So from one uh, one uh, bit per cell, now we are at 162 into 4, which is 648 uh, bits per cell. So 648 times increase. And going forward in 2030 or even before that, we are going to launch 200 layer cell or even PLC, which is 5 bit per cell. So which, which is going to add huge capacity uh, to, uh, to the flash industry. And uh, not only in uh, flash we are increasing the density, we are also doing a lot of innovations in the hard disk drive. If you see this picture of a uh, hard disk drive, there are a lot of disks inside this hard disk drive. So how do we increase the capacity of a hard disk drive when we know the thickness of the hard disk, the hard disk drive will be safe. So by adding more number of magnetic disks in one disk, or what we can do, the data is stored on the tracks of the hard disk. So if we are able to add more number of tracks on the platter, then we can add more number of data. Otherwise, the, all these magnetic bits, they are spaced at some distance. So if we try to reduce the space, then we can add more number of bits on the one track. So there are three ways to increase the capacity of a hard disk drive. But then there are challenges too. Because if you try to put more number of disks in one hard disk drive, you have to reduce the thickness of the hard disk drive, which is not possible because the less thickness of the hard disk drive can create a lot of reliability issues and noise. So helium comes as a savior here. So what we did in the hard disk drive, we removed the air from the drives and we hermetically sealed the drive into helium. Now helium is a gas which is one seventh of the density of uh, air. So because of helium, now we can have uh, less friction and all these bladders can rotate at 7200 RPM without causing any worry. So that's how we are able to pack earlier two to three platters in one hard disk. Now we can pack nine platters in the hard disk. And secondly, how to increase the track bits. So what's happening? When the read and write hand in this magnetic platter, it has to land at a very particular position. So if the actuator assembly or if the read and the write hand cannot position itself on the right location, then there will be errors in the data. With this triple st stage actuator assembly, with this innovation, now the head can be landed precisely on the right location. So now we can have thinner width of the uh, tracks. So that's how we increase the track density. And lastly, when the magnetic bit is written on the magnetic platter, so there is a lot of jitter and magnetic fields. And to reduce that, what we did, we innovated a technology called energy assist magnetic recording and because of that, now we are able to pack more number of bits into the uh, into these tracks. So by with the help of these three technologies, we are able to build these kind of products. Now we have uh, like uh, g boards which is like 2 petabytes of capacity, we have pen drive and micro SD card with 1 terabytes of capacity, we have hard disk drive with 20 terabytes. So these are the innovations not only for today, even for future we are ready and in future you will see more and more number of uh, higher capacity products will be uh, uh, launched by Western Eastern in uh, India and the world. I'm just shifting the gears. So, we have a product, same product which can be used, uh, it's a semi device. It can be used in a mobile.
mindful navigation. It can be used in a set up box. It can be used in a 5G telephone base station. Or similar device can be used in a CCTV camera also. But it will function well. It is a pin compatible part. It's a software compatible. But what happens when you use one product into the other application? It will work, but it will work only for a certain amount of time. So after six months, one year, there will be some degraded performance or some reliability issues. So this set of presentation, I want to focus on how. So, uh, so we, we have to focus on like how, what kind of uh, uh, issues are there in this storage technology which can be addressed. So, I would like to admit that flash memory, it's a basically a memory cell with a floating gate and few electrons are there which act as a zero or one. And when high voltage is applied on this flash cell, there are chances that uh, uh, the, there may be cell to cell interference or when a lot of read and writes happen on, the, on this device, so eventually the oxide layer of this flash memory cell, it degrades. What does it mean? The flash read and writes are limited. You cannot write it over time. It is just like a bat your battery or your car tire. After usage, it will be read. So what happens like Western Digital when we make flash products? So it comes in different qualities. It's not like a processor where uh, if you use a one piece or if you use a one million piece, they're the same quality. So what we do, we extract the higher quality flash and put it, in, it into automatic segments or data center segments. And there are applications like USB or mobile phone where you don't need that kind of uh, high endurance flash. So endurance is one of the key factor which need to be considered when you are choosing a storage product. For example, the card or EMC used for mobile phone may not be very high endurance. But the same chip, if it is used in a CCTV camera where if you are doing 24 by 7 recording for 5 years or 7 years, you need a different kind of uh, flash, very high quality flash, which can endure these many durations. And secondly, flash also gets corrupted when it is exposed to lower temperatures or high temperatures. So because of these reasons. Now if you use a uh, set-up box or data center flash because you know, set-up box or mobile phone or data, data, data center, they are in the control environment and if you use that kind of flash in an automotive vehicle, it's not going to last. It can function for three months, six months, but when you have an extreme temperature, it's not going to function well. Even the CCTV camera which is like outside and the temperature is in Rajasthan is 50 degrees Celsius. So there's a Big issue. So we have seen in field where customers have used read and read, uh, memory, flash memory in their automotive products and then uh, most of them got rejected in uh, three to six months time. So we have to take care of take care of uh, temperature and attitude vibrations in these flash technologies. And the third and most important criteria is data retention. So what happens, I'll just give an example. You store some of your pictures in your USB. You just put your USB in a drawer, open it after uh, 5 years, when you connect it to the laptop, there are very high chances that some of the data will be corrupted. This is because of the flash memory cell characteristics. Electrons can leak even when it is not powered. So in applications like automotive or some application like telephone where you need 5 years or 10 years of life, you need to have features like auto and manual refresh because of which you can have uh, longer data retention times. So these are the very important criteria uh, which need to be considered. And apart from that, you have uh, uh, storage protocols. For example, uh, EMMC protocol. Now there is a no new development going on EMMC. The next generation development is on UFS. So when you are choosing a processor, you need to ask the processor guy, is your processor supporting UFS standard or it is still on EMMC? And same for the solid state drive, that like SATA and SAS protocols are almost now dead on the solid state drives. Now it is an NVMe and PCI standards. So the Intel or AMD or do they support the NVMe standards? So then go for the latest standards. That's the way to uh, look at the protocol side. And also flash memory dynamics are uh, very, very different from the other semiconductor component dynamics. There's a lot of variation in the price. In the flash, like there is a China flash market and DRAM exchange where flash prices 
are changing like a stock market it changes every day so when you are designing a product you have to ask your vendor can you give a one year price validity or a two year price validity and also flash is always the fluctuating demand and supply so do you have long term agreements with your vendors so due to the shortage time we have seen now uh, many companies who didn't have uh, lta agreements with the uh, flash vendors they could not get even the supplies and the third thing is since this flash technology it it uh, like discontinues and there is a lot of innovation going on so the old products are discontinued very fast so we have cases in india where customer designed a product started the design he picked up some uh, emc memory by the time this product was ready and ready to deploy in the field that flash memory got discontinued so ask all these questions to your uh, storage builders and uh, uh, so that get satisfied uh, yourself so that's why i said like all the products looks look and feel the same but they are different like product which are used in mobile phone they are driven by price the industrial and iot products they are driven by temperature range and endurance automotive products in the same uh, storage they are driven by the ac standards or there are so many other certifications are required connected to our set of box now here you need a very very high endurance for example mobile may have under 200 p cycles but for connected home you need 50000 cycles and finally the surveillance in surveillance applications you need even the higher capacities like 1 terabyte and uh, wider range surveillance camera can be posted in uh, some uh, external uh, harsh environment conditions so these are the areas and uh, if, if this is a slide which i picked from my website like we at point distribution like what sand is couple of years back now if you buy a, any sand is retail car you use it in your set up box or in your application then warranty is void we have clearly written that who don't get warranty if retail grade or mobile car is used for dashboards or cctv cameras and air cameras in automotive equipment so we have to be very very careful by selecting parts so the message here i want to give is i do make storage and after thought partner with the storage vendor before you start your designs and also discuss your use case and application along with the vendor so that we can advise the right part for these applications so uh, there is a smart city expo also going on so i thought let me put one slide on the smart city expo like we have the solutions storage solutions for all kind of smart cities right from uh, micro sd cards for uh, cameras then hard disk drives for nvds and dvds and also the cloud storage for backup uh, solutions so this is the enterprise grade solution from west end still where you can have thousands of cameras and all the data can be stored on this uh, west end still uh, platform so in the limited time so that's what i can uh, share about the storage